Okay, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Welcome back. Happy 2022. And welcome to today's CNCF live webinar, the first of the year, Kubernetes 1.23 release. I'm Libby Schultz. And today's webinar, <clears throat> I'm going to read our code of conduct and then hand over to Karen Chu, Ray Lahano, and Xander Grabinski with the 1.23 release team. A few housekeeping items before we get started. During the webinar, you're not able to speak, but there is a Q&A box on the right-hand side of your screen. Please feel free to drop your questions there and we'll get to as many as we can at the end. This is a webinar of the CNCF and as such is subject to the CNCF code of conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that code of conduct. And please be respectful of all your all of your fellow participants and presenters. Please also note that this recording and slides will be posted later today to the CNCF online programs page, community.cncf.io under online programs. They're also available via your registration. And the recording will also be available on our CNCF YouTube channel under online programs playlist. With that, I will hand it over to the team. Hey everyone, um, as mentioned, I'm Karen. I am the communications lead for the 1.23 release team. Um, and um, should we go to the next slide here? <laughs> Cool. Um, yeah. And Ray, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Ray Lahano. I was the 1.23 release lead. I'm uh, Xander Javinsky. I can throw myself in here too. I was a uh, 1.23 enhancements lead. Cool. Um, so on today's agenda, um, we are going to be going over the 1.24 release timeline and updates, and then we'll go back to the 1.23 highlights, um, SIG updates, and then Ray and Xander will do the Q&A at the end. We've got just a brief overview here of the projected timeline for the 1.24 release. Um, so we'll be kicking the release off on Monday, January 10th, next Monday here. And then all of the following dates after that are, are subject to change, particularly the enhancements freeze date. Um, but this is kind of what we have laid out so far, looking at an initial enhancements freeze of Thursday, January 27th, uh, followed by code freeze on March 29th, and then targeting final release for 1.24 on Tuesday, April 19th. All right, next we're going to go through the 1.23 highlights. Uh, first off is a theme of the release, so Kubernetes 1.23. The theme is the next frontier, and this is the logo. Uh, the next frontier represents um, three things. One is the new and graduated enhancements in 1.23. Uh, secondly, the uh, Kubernetes history of Star Trek references. And third, lastly, the, uh, the continuing growth of community members uh, via the release team. little overview of the enhancements that we had tracked for 1.23. Um, we ended up with a total of 47 tracked, um, 11 of those being stable, 16 beta, and then 19 new alpha features and one deprecation. Um, and you know, since 1.17, there's consistently been um, north of, of 10 stable features, um, which is pretty fun. Um, and then I guess for those unfamiliar with the terminology here, the, the alpha features, um, you need to have a feature flag enabled to try those out. So those are, are blocked behind the flags. And then um, beta and stable are enabled by default and, and can be used right away. Yeah, and also just a helpful note, if you go to kubernetes.io and search for feature flags, there's actually a feature flags uh, page for all those feature flags. All right, I'm going to just go through some of the major things or all the major things for 1.23. Uh, <clears throat> there's a few slides here. We'll go into more detail when we go through the SIG updates. Uh, firstly, is dual stack IPv4 and IPv6 networking uh, went to stable. Uh, dual stack was first introduced as alpha 1.15 and refactored in 1.20 because before 1.20, you had to have a service per IP family. So 1.20, uh, the service uh, API supported dual stack. So it's now stable in 1.23. Uh, and the IPv6 dual stack feature flag has been removed since it is stable. Uh, secondly, the pod security admission uh, is now beta. So for those who are familiar with the pod security policies, which were deprecated in 1.21, and pod security policies 
also known as PSPs, is targeted to be removed in 1.25. So pod security mission is the replacement for, for pod security policy. Uh, and what it is, it's a mission controller that, that evaluates pods against a predefined set of pod security standards to either uh, admit or deny the pod from running. Uh, so we'll go into a little bit more detail when we go through the SIG updates. Uh, thirdly, the horizontal pod autoscaler v2 API is now stable, or GA. Uh, <clears throat> so this v2 API allows for multiple and custom metrics to be used. Uh, the, the v1 API is not being deprecated. Uh, also, the Kubelet container runtime interface is now beta. So the CRI v1 API is also the default since it is beta. Um, go into that a little bit more detail with the SIG updates as well. Some more major themes here. The TTL controller is now stable, which cleans up. It's a little like a garbage collector for it cleans up jobs and pods after they finish. Uh, you do have to set a specific field in the jobs, the TTL seconds after finish to be set. Then, it'll, then a Kubernetes, well, there's a controller that will watch all the jobs and it'll compare that field against the current time to see if the pods are done or the job is done. And it will delete those corresponding pods. Um, another one is simplified multi-point plugin configuration for scheduler. Uh, so this is for the new, for this is for the cube scheduler. It's adding a new simplified config field for plugins to allow for multiple extension points to be enabled in one place. Another one is the generic inline volumes to is now GA. So this allows any existing storage driver that supports dynamic provisioning to be used and as an ephemeral volume uh, that's bound to the pod. So kind of like empty gear. Another one is software supply chain, salsa level one compliance. So Kubernetes now releases um, and gen generates prov uh, provenance annotation files describing the, the staging and release phases of the release process. So the artifacts are now verified as they're handed over from one phase to the next. More major themes, the skip volume ownership change. Uh, so this feature allows you to, to, uh, to choose if you want to change the ownership when a volume is by mount inside a container. Otherwise, it would go back recursively to, to change the ownership for each, for each volume. Um, I'll go into this, like I mentioned, more in the SIG updates as well. And the problem is that it could kind of take too long for very large volumes. So this allows you as an option to, to skip that. Uh, also allows CSI drivers to opt in volume and permission changes. So this allows CSI drivers to declare support for FS group based permissions. Uh, structured logging is now beta, so most log messages from Kubelet and Kube Scheduler has been converted. And there's more CSI migration updates. Uh, so there's this is a continuation, uh, or this is a continued effort to move from entry plugins to CSI. Uh, so it's beta for GCPD, AWS, EBS, Azure Disk, and Alpha for Ceph, RBD, and Portworx. A few more major things: uh, expression validation CRD is now alpha. Uh, so if the feature gate is enabled, a uh, custom resource can be uh, validated using the common expression language. Um, no one's open API v3. Open a API v3 is uh, more transparent than uh, open API v2. It's also more expressive because we actually lost some fields when we published with open API v2. Uh, server side val feed validation. So if the this is now alpha, so the speech gate is enabled. Users will receive warnings from the server when they send a Kubernetes objects in their request that contain unknown or duplicate fields. Deprecation of flex volume. So this is one of the, um, this is actually deprecated previously. It's, this is the out of tree CSI, the out of tree CSI driver is now the recommended way uh, to, and deprecation of K-log specific flags. Uh, so this is Kubernetes is in the process of simplifying logging in its components. Now we'll go into the uh, SIG updates. So we're going to, so we're going to go through each various SIGs and talk about the enhancements uh, per SIG. Starting off with SIG API machinery, which covers all aspects of the API server. So the first one's priority and fairness of API server requests. So this actually uh, extends the existing uh, max and flight request handler in the API server so that we can make more distinctions among requests to, uh, to provide prioritization of fairness among other, category, other categories of requests. So this, uh, so, we could prioritize, so we could prioritize things like node heartbeats and maintenance during high traffic situations. That is when to beta. In also each of these slides as well, there's also a link to the enhancement issue, uh, and there's also a link to the Kubernetes enhancements proposal. 
Next one for SIG API machinery is the custom resource def, uh, or CRD validation expression language. Uh, so this is where we can use it, where we currently use or we can use mission webhooks to validate custom resources, but it is it tends to can be very complicated. So this feature enables the use of common expression language or CEL to validate those custom resources and also makes those uh, CRDs more self-contained and you could actually write um, write those uh, validations or as code so it's, it'll be in the definition of the CRD object. Add server side an unknown field validation which is now alpha. Um, so this is the links here again to feature enhancements issue 2885. Uh, so this allows you to send uh, before if there was a server side a node field validation it will let it go through but now with the server side validation if there's an uh, if there's a misspelled field or, or invalid field or extra field uh, or any field that's duplicated uh, it will not allow that uh, this also is also kind of linked to there's the client side validation might uh, is there's a proposal for it to be removed since client side validation is very painful. Um, so this is um, enhancing the server side validation. Here. Open API enum types uh, is alpha. And uh, so the way it is now currently or before 123 or currently still, since this is still an alpha, uh, the API fields uh, that you see are actually enums, but they're actually represented as plain string. So this adds in uh, enum marker uh, so that those enum types, uh, so that allows for enum type support for open API. Uh, open API v3 goes to alpha. So uh, open API v3, like I mentioned before, is more transparent and expressive. And with open API v2, uh, there are some fields that were dropped when published. So this feature uh, adds a new endpoint to publish open API v3 specs for the uh, built-in objects, CRDs, and API service types. Xander? Yeah, I'm going to touch on the caps that were part of SIG apps. So this covers um, just deploying and operating applications in, in Kubernetes and, and the developer experience related to that. So the first one that we have is cron jobs. And cron jobs have been stable for a little while now. 1.21 was when that change was made. And there just was some cleanup work um, with the old controller that happened in the 1.23 release. And then this one Ray touched on as a major theme, I believe the, the TTL after finish controller. So this adds a field to jobs, the, the TTL seconds after finish to um, allow this new controller to clean up um, old pods related to, to jobs. So this actually went stable this time around. Um, and yeah, like Ray mentioned in the, the major themes, it does require that um, that field set to, to make use of that. And then this one was um, auto removing persistent volume claims uh, created by stateful sets. Um, so previously, um, those wouldn't be deleted as part of cleanup of the stateful sets. Um, it was a manual process. And so this adds um, a, an auto cleanup of PDCs that are managed by stateful sets. And then job tracking without lingering pods. Um, so currently, jobs um, rely on completed pods to um, or existing pods to to uh, count the you know the job completion status. And this uh, removes that requirement by utilizing a finalizer rather than keeping those existing pods hanging around. And then min ready seconds on stateful sets um, allows end users to specify a, a number of seconds that a pod must exist without crash looping uh, for the stateful set to be considered ready and have that status. Um, it's an existing uh, feature with uh, deployments and daemon sets and replica sets. So this adds parity with stateful sets. And then add count of ready pods in job status. Um, so this, uh, let's take a look here. Feature adds a field ready that counts the number of job pods that have a ready condition. Um, so 
uh, an, a status reflection on the uh, the job spec. All right, now I'll go through the enhancements from SIG auth, which covers improvements to Kubernetes authorization, authentication, and cluster security policy. Uh, so they just have, there's one enhancement from SIGOTH, it's, but it is uh, one of the major themes, it's pod security mission, uh, which replaces uh, pod security policies. Uh, like I mentioned before, pod security policies is uh, targeted to be removed in 1.25. So pod security mission went to beta in 1.23. Uh, uh, there is a feature blog on this on, on the Kubernetes.io website and with some tutorials as well. Uh, so pod security mission controller uh, enforces the pod security standards on pods within a namespace. Uh, there's three pod security stand, three levels of pod security standards, privileged, baseline, and restricted. And you can set the policy enforcement in three ways as well, enforcing, uh, audit, or warning. Uh, and you use this, or you use policy enforcement uh, through label, through namespaces and through labels on the namespace. Next up, we've got auto scaling, and this relates to all things auto scaling and uh, resource estimation, things like that for the control plane. So we've got one cap for, for this SIG, and that is uh, graduating the horizontal pod auto scaler to stable. Um, and uh, yeah, so this adds supports for uh, multiple and custom metrics for horizontal uh, pod auto scaling, and uh, nice to see this one go to stable for sure. Next is SIG CLI, which covers key control and related tools. Uh, there's a new command, uh, which is in alpha uh, as key control events. It's different from key control get events. So it, this does add a new command. It adds more features than key control get events. So there's like default sorting of the events. Um, you could manipulate events more, so you could sort events with other criteria. Uh, you could also list events in the timeline for the last uh, n minutes. It also extends the behavior of dash dash watch as well. Uh, you could also uh, you could change you could union the fields and custom columns uh, options. So uh, there's a little more. It just extends the keep control get events, and so now there's command of keep control uh, events. got cluster lifecycle and so this sig deals with um everything cluster lifecycle um deployment and and upgrades of kubernetes clusters and the the one enhancement that we have here is for kubeadm um so when kubeadm does its initial init it creates a, a config map in the cluster and um this is uh just a cat that changes the naming of, of that config map to a, a more simplified form. Next is SIG instrumentation, which covers best practice for observability through metrics, logging, and events across uh, all the components. Well, uh, so structured logging went to beta. So structured uh, so structured logging uh, defines a standard structure for log messages. Be before structured log before this enhancement, there was no structure for log messages, um, and add some methods to to K log. K log is a fork of G log uh, to enforce this structure. Um, and so with this, most log in 123, most log messages from kubelet and kube scheduler uh, has been uh, converted. Uh, related to, to K-Log, um, like I mentioned before, how K-Log is a fork of G-Log. Uh, in 123, it was alpha, there's deprecation of K-Log specific flags and Kubernetes components uh, is to make logging uh, more simplified. Uh, there are some, uh, the, the ones that are being, the flags are being deprecated, now they're, now they're leaving them with defaults. Uh, so, um, so for the K log flags, they all the they the plans to remove all the flags besides dash v and dash v module. Next up, we've got uh, SIG network. Um, they're responsible for the uh, components and interfaces that expose networking capabilities to uh, Kubernetes workloads. Um, they also do some of the reference implementations for for those APIs like Kube proxy and things like that. So first up was one of the major themes that, that Ray touched on, which was IPv4 and v6 dual stack support. Um, and we're going stable this release. Um, so it adds 
adds dual stack support for pods, nodes, and services. And um, yeah, it's it's a super exciting feature. I know that this one, a lot of folks worked really hard to deliver this, and it's it's really great to see it go to stable. And next up, we have namespace scoped ingress class parameters. Um, so it adds a uh, new scope and namespace fields to the ingress class parameter ref field um, to allow referencing namespace scope parameters resources. So this is, I'm actually not super familiar with this one, but uh, you've got uh, a description there. I encourage folks to go take a look at uh, the cap on the features website. And then last, topology aware hints is going beta. And so this uh, works to enable um, topology aware routing. Um, and it adds that uh, that automatic topology um, hinting mechanism to the endpoint slice controller. And then node. So this is a, the work under this SIG encompasses a huge um, huge amount of things. Um, and so this is um, everything to do with the kubelet and um, schedule, well, I guess, uh, life cycle of pods that are scheduled to a node. Um, yeah, lots happening here. We'll, uh, we'll go right in. Um, this one I'm actually really excited about, ephemeral containers, um, along with the kubectl debug feature. Um, so it adds a mechanism to run a short-lived container that executes within the namespace of an existing pod and um, allows uh, debugging capabilities against running pods without having to do the whole like kubectl exec workflow. Um, yeah, this one's super cool. And then we've got a uh, container runtime interface support going to beta. Um, yeah. And next up, we have uh, C advisor lists, uh, CRI, full container, and pod stats. Um, so this will enhance the CRI API with additional metrics to be able to support uh, pod and container fields in um, the summary API directly from CRI without having to utilize C advisor. Um, so some additional metrics information there. And then extending pod resources API to report allocatable resources. Um, so it ends up enhancing the metrics information, um, so it adds to the, the kubelet pod resources endpoint, um, which will allow third party consumers uh, to get more information about compute allocation. Um, so super useful for getting a, a clear understanding of the state of resources within a cluster and utilization. And then next up, we have CPU manager policies. Um, so this will provide some additional isolation, uh, guarantee that no physical core is shared among different containers, uh, improves cache efficiency, and mitigates the interference with other workloads that can consume resources of the same physical core, um, which should help with a lot of noisy neighbor um, issues that, that folks operating clusters can deal with. And then we've got uh, priority, pod priority based graceful node shutdown going to alpha. So um, graceful node shutdown itself was a, a feature that moved up in one of the more recent releases. And um, this ties pod priority into that feature. Um, so it should take pod priority values into account to determine what order the pods are stopped when going through a graceful node shutdown. And then also add some flags to specify the total time for shutdown and uh, time to reserve for shutting down critical pods. So I know this feature has been um, definitely a, a hit with cluster operators um, as they deal with upgrades and things like that. And then next we've got gRPC probe to pod. So um, it adds uh, the ability to use gRPC to check for liveness, readiness, and startup probes rather than just uh, typical HTTP. Um, 
this is alpha, so um, another one of the features that would need to be enabled with the flag. And then lastly for node, uh, CPU manager policy option to distribute CPUs across NUMA nodes. Um, so it adds a CPU manager policy field. Um, and uh, when enabled, that would trigger the CPU manager to distribute CPUs across NUMA nodes. Next is uh, SIG scheduling. So SIG scheduling is responsible for that make uh, for the components that make pod placement decisions. Uh, first one is the scheduler component config API uh, went to beta. So this allows uh, cluster administrators uh, to build and validate and version their configurations. Uh, so in 1.23, um, so 1.22 is also in beta as well, but there's been some changes. There's been, so the next 1.23, there was a beta iteration uh, to be when beta 3 was introduced. Uh, so this is the cube scheduler configuration API. Um, Next is the simplified multi-point plugin configuration for scheduler. Uh, this, is, this went to beta. Uh, so this feature uh, defines a simplified field uh, for end users to, con to configure scheduler plugins, which use multi-point uh, extensions. Next is allowing updating scheduling directives of jobs uh, went to beta, so this feature makes node affinity, uh, node selector, tolerations, annotations, labels, uh, labels of pod templates. They make immutable for suspended jobs. Next is SIG security. Uh, so SIG security covers the horizontal security initiatives for the, for the project. Uh, includes external security audits, vulnerability management process across uh, any security documentation as well. Well, uh, defend against logging secrets via static analysis went to stable. So the motivation of this enhancement came from the 2019 secu external security audit, uh, where uh, the exposure uh, or we, we, the, what was discovered was that secrets uh, were, were exposed to logs or execution environments uh, in three ways. The bearer tokens are revealed in logs, environment variables exposed sensitive data, uh, iSCSI volume storage um, stored clear text, secrets and logs. So with this enhancement, uh, there's a type analysis called taint uh, propagation analysis, which provides insight on how, on how the data is spread from within the program. So with this feature, we, there's, state, there's a taint propagation analysis tool called GoFlow Levy. So it runs as a blocking pre-submit test, in which, which will detect if the secret is, um, is being exposed anywhere. Uh, with, with that pull request, so during the testing of that, and it will block any pull requests that log any secrets. Next is SIG storage. So SIG storage is, is responsible for ensuring the different types of file block storage, uh, which are available when a container is created, scheduled, um, also responsible for any storage capacity management, and also influence scheduling of container space on storage, and also just storage operations as well, like snapshots. Uh, first one is skip volume ownership change. Uh, so this feature went to stable. So this is one of the um, one of the major themes. <clears throat> so the problem before was that when a volume is bind mount inside a container, uh, the permissions on that volume are changed recursively to to that FS group uh, value that is provided. Uh, this change in ownership can take a very long time if the volume is very large. Uh, so any issues? So this we saw a lot of issues with. Uh, databases with very large volumes. So with this feature allows the user to specify how they want the permission ownership change volumes. You could set it to always, so always change the, the permissions and ownership to match FS group or on root mismatch. So only perform the permission ownership change if the permissions um, do, does not match the expectations compared to the top level directory. So there's, like I mentioned, one of the major themes that there's a continued effort to move entry uh, CSI plugin or entry uh, to CSI uh, plugins. So this is one of the enhancements that went to uh, is AWS EBS entry to CSI driver migration. So this is the part of that continued effort to migrate entry storage plugins to to CSI. So this migrates internal sub entry AWS EBS plugin to call out to the EBS CSI plugin. 
This is another one for GCE PD, uh, another continued effort to move the migrate entry storage plugins to CSI. So migrated internals of entry GCE PD plugin to call out the PD CSI driver. So this went to beta. Azure desk entry to CSI driver migration went to beta. This is another one of the <laughs> continued entry storage plugins uh, to CSI. Next, uh, config FS group policy and CSI drive driver objects uh, went to stable. So this feature allows the CSI drivers to opt in to those volume ownership change. So there's a new field, uh, CSI driver dot spec dot FS group policy, which allows to define if that driver supports volume ownership mod modifications with the FS group. Uh, generic inline ephemeral volumes went to stable. So this is one of the major themes as well. So this allows you, similar to MTDR, but with, with, with CSI plugins, it allows you to use any existing storage driver that supports dynamic provisioning to be used as an ephemeral volume. Recovering from resize failures went to alpha. Uh, so the issue before is that when a PVC is expanded, let's say if you um, let's say if you expand a PVC to that was 10 gigs and you expand it to 500 gigs, but it, the underlying storage provider doesn't support it. It only supports like 100 gigs. So this feature allows you to resize to to change that request to uh, change that uh, to that re that resize from 500 gigs to 100 gigs, uh, so that you can recover from that uh, from that volume expansion failure. Delegate FS group to CSI driver instead of Kubelet uh, went to Alpha. Uh, so when the FS group is specified, um, like we mentioned in the in the skip volume ownership. Uh, the map volume is recursively um, challenged or shown or ch own or to modded. Um, so this allows it to, you don't, the Kubit will do this, but there's some storage drivers, CSI since chown and to mod um, are Unix um, primitives. So, like, you're, or so this allows it so that the Kubit handles it. So this features moves that to the CSI driver, which can apply that FS group on its mount instead. Portworks file entry to CSI driver migration went to alpha. So this is part of that continued effort to migrate uh, entry storage plugins to CSI. Always honor reclaim policy uh, went to alpha. So this is when, um, if you're familiar, if you work with PVs and PVCs, you know the issue is that if the, if the persistent volume is deleted before the PVC, then the reclaim policy is ignored or associated. Uh, so that this feature, and they, so there was a certain order you had to delete it. You had to delete the PVC first, then delete the persistent volume. So this feature makes sure that the persistent volume um, reclaim policy is always honored, even if you delete the persistent volume first before the PVC. Another, um, so this is Ceph RBD in tree provisioner to CSI driver migration. So this went to alpha. This is part of that continued effort to migrate in tree storage plugins to CSI. Next is SIG testing. SIG testing is interested in, effecting, in effective testing of Kubernetes and automating away project toil. So there is one enhancement uh, for SIG testing uh, in 1.23, which was reduced Kubernetes build maintenance uh, went to stable. So this feature reduces the Kubernetes build maintenance by moving to a single build system. Uh, so with Kubernetes, uh, part, of this, what, part of this proposal was to remove the base of build and any associated tooling and to just use the, to use the make build. Uh, so this feature allows it and just simplify the process by moving to that single uh, build system. We've got SIG Windows, which deals with supporting Windows nodes and, and scheduling Windows containers. And it's just the one enhancement for SIG Windows, and that is um, allowing Windows privileged containers. So extending that same capability that um, exists for, for Linux containers to run as a, a privileged container and have more host level access, um, getting that working for, for Windows containers. And that is moving to beta with this release. All right, so next, uh, so that covers all the 47 enhancements in 1.23. Um, what's, uh, what's next is we're gonna talk about the release team shadow program and the release team itself. 
Uh, with each Kubernetes release, there is three a year. There is a release team for each release. And that release team is made up of community members uh, from all sorts of different organizations, uh, students as well. And those these release team members handle the day-to-day -day, um, operations of the release. Uh, this team is broken down into seven different roles with the release team lead, enhancements, uh, CI signal, bug triage, uh, docs or documentation, uh, release notes, and communication. Um, so, and with the, each of these roles, there's one lead with about four to five shadows per role. Uh, and in the recent releases, we've had about five shadows for the enhancements team, since there, there's quite a bit of work uh, on the early part of the release for the enhancements team. So, so, so there are a few roles that have had uh, five shadows per role. And the goal for the release team is to train new leads uh, and for shadows uh, to become new leads as well, eventually in the future, uh, and for and for role leads to share the knowledge uh, that they've had or to share their task and knowledge that they've had through many uh, release teams or release cycles. Like I myself have been on release teams since 1.18. It also is a good way to uh, for new contributors as well to be to be introduced to the Kubernetes uh, uh, project. So, and each release cycle generally takes about four months, a give or take, or about 15 weeks. Uh, every week depends on uh, the workload for each release team role. It, it kind of varies on the week, and it also it varies on the role itself. Uh, like enhancements is very uh, early on the release uh, heavy, so they do quite a bit of work. Uh, in within the first three to four weeks of the of the release cycle, and then do quite a bit of work uh, around code freeze. Uh, but there are some roles um, like docs and communications, and um, that will that are more the tail end of the release heavy. So they do most of the work uh, towards docs does quite a bit of work uh, around code freeze and code freeze to the release, and they do uh, quite a bit of work <laughs> on release day itself and save with communications where they, they tend to do a lot a lot more work towards uh, the middle to tail end of the release uh, once we know what enhancements are going to make the release. So I just want to invite folks who are interested in uh, learning about joining the release team uh, to check out the uh, GitHub repo for the on uh, the release team shadows. Um, like Xander mentioned in, pre, in, the early, in the beginning of this webinar, the 1.24 release cycle will start on Monday. So, um, so the release, so every before every release cycle, we release uh, an, a shadow application. So I do suggest to join the, the Kubernetes Slack and join the, the the SIG release channel or the SIG release mailing lists or the or the Kubernetes developers mailing list to get notifications uh, when those uh, shadow applications are out. So I'm gonna go to any questions. Check the chats. One question in the chat about um, CNI plugins that are compatible with Windows-based nodes. Um, and I think I'll just kind of add a, a all up thing. Um, don't know specifically on that, but I think for questions on specific caps um, that you want some more detail on, a good place to go is going to be the SIG channel for that cap on the Kubernetes Slack. So if you are a member of the Kubernetes Slack, um, the, the SIG Windows channel would be a fantastic place to ask that question. And I'm sure you could get it answered super quickly. Yeah, thank you, Xander. Let's scroll over through. If there's any other questions here. I think that was it. Uh, so I want to thank everyone for their time. Um, and you know, it, I do actually see one more question here. Uh, well, the other container runtime. Um, so there's a question about container runtime. And I uh, do want to make a note in 1.24, uh, Docker shim uh, will be removed. Um, and it's not a container runtime. It's a shim so that folks could use the Docker, uh, Docker engine or the Docker container runtime. Um, with Kubernetes. And so when starting 1.24, uh, Docker Shim has already been deprecated, so it'll be removed in 1.24. So in 1.24, uh, you would do have to uh, 
uh, to uh, to use a container runtime that is compliant with the container runtime interface. So uh, container runtimes, there's there's quite a few that are out there, uh, like container D, cryo, um, and there's more. We uh, more on uh, there are several blog posts on this as well, so you can look it up on Kubernetes.io. So with that, I uh, do want to thank everyone for their time um, for joining us on this release webinar for 1.23 on learning what's new 1.23. Uh, I want to thank my other co-hosts here, Xander and Karen as well. Thank you for your efforts on the 1.23 release cycle. And thank you, Libby, for hosting us. Of course. Thank you all so much for kicking off 2022. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Look for the recordings later today. And uh, with that, I will say goodbye to everyone and thanks for thanks for joining. Bye.